Now let's go through and let's do the last two of these examples. So we're looking at part C, which says to take F and multiply times G. So in this case, again, our F function is 2X plus 1, and our G function is 3X minus 2. And we're supposed to multiply these two things. When we multiply binomials, that means we have to do the distribution repeatedly. So when I distribute the 2x, we get 6x squared, and then 2x times minus 2 would be a negative 4x, and then x times 3, er, sorry, 1 times 3x would be a positive 3x, and 1 times negative 2 would be negative 2. And then we can clean up or, you know, combine our like terms. So this is 6x squared minus x minus 2. This is our f times g function. Now we also have to state the domain. So we have to look at what kind of a function this is. Radical, rational, or polynomial. And in this case it's polynomial. So the domain is all real numbers. Now lastly, part D asks us to do f divided by g. So we're going to take the f function, which is 2x plus 1, and we're going to divide that by the g function, which is 3x minus 2. Now before we're done, we always want to look to see if anything will simplify, um, if we could cancel anything out or reduce it all, and in this case we can't. We cannot cancel out our x's here. These are two terms on top and bottom. You can't cancel amongst terms. You remember, you can only cancel factors or multiplications. So because this is a term, it either all, the whole entire um, 2x plus 1 cancels or none of it does. So this is actually our finished product here. Now we do have to state the domain. So we need to look at what kind of a function this is. Is it rational, radical, or polynomial? In this case, this is a rational function because it's a ratio. So if you'll remember our procedure, for rational functions, we take the denominator, the 3x minus 2, and set it equal to 0 to find the holes in the domain. So as we add 2 over to the other side, we get 3x equals 2, and dividing both sides by 3, we get x equals 2 thirds. So in this case, this is our hole in the denominator. So if we were to draw out a number line here and say, okay, here's two-thirds. This is what we cannot use, but we could use everything to the left of it. So everything to the left of it would start at negative infinity and go all the way up to two-thirds, but not including two-thirds. Then we could use everything to the right of it. So that would be starting at two-thirds, but not including, that's why we use the parenthesis, all the way up to infinity. And we would join those things together with a union symbol. So our final answer would look like that.